have a good day. LA Beast here. And the video that you're about to see here today is me going out and standing in 20 to 25 spots where James Gandolfini, the star of the hit show The Sopranos, once stood. Why? Because his birthday is coming up on September 18, 2020. But also, for the past few months, I've actually been honored to be included in something entitled Virtual Cons. Now, all that Virtual Cons is, is an app which is free to download and is a place for fans to enjoy their favorite conventions digitally on their cell phone or computer uh, and enjoy a convention through the comfort of their own couch. For Sopranos fans using the Virtual Cons app, they can now have live one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of their favorite actors from the show. They can purchase autographs, Sopranos merchandise. Hopefully, for the love of God, uh, I, I, I ask for your help humbly uh, if you could quite possibly go to virtualcons.com and sign up to receive the beta uh, of this new Virtual Cons app and give any feedback or suggestions on how to make the app great, you would 100% totally uh, give me a little bit of street cred with the Sopranos crowd here. So uh, I'd appreciate your help very much. Just say thank you for going to www.virtualcons.com and using the referral code LABEAST to sign up for the beta testing and letting me know your feedback, I will be giving away this $200 rare James Gandolfini autograph from when he was in the movie True Romance to say thank you. But but I'll, you know what? I'll say thank you right now anyway because thank you. You are all awesome. Satrial's Pork Store is a place where all the guys from The Sopranos would hang out and shoot the shit. As you can see right here as they were standing in front of this building, which used to be an old auto mechanic shop, but now here in the year 2020, as you can see, the building no longer exists as it's a parking lot. And even in the back of the parking lot, Artie Bucco was upset with Tony Soprano because he burned down Artie's restaurant for the insurance money. Uh, and in this scene, you can actually see the houses in the background are the same as they were back in the 90s. In this scene, Tony Soprano sits down with Uncle Junior to discuss the recent thefts of Comley trucks. Uh, and in the background, you can see the apartments with the fire escapes are still the same. The traffic light is in the same spot as well. Now in this scene, Tony meets Richie April, who got out of prison after 10 years, and they meet in front of the old Satrial's pork store, and in the background you can actually see the cone of a church, which is still there, and I guess there's uh, apartment buildings as well across the street, uh, and here I am, uh, imagining that I'm, I'm putting my hands around Richie April's head, uh, which was in that specific scene. Now for those of you that don't know, in the pilot episode they actually use this place, Centani's, which now actually has a giant tree in front of the building. Uh, but this used to be, in the original episode, what Satrial's pork store became uh, in later seasons of the show. Uh, everything is pretty much exactly the same as it was in 1999 when they filmed the pilot episode. And here in this scene, I tried to replicate where James Gandolfini sat in front of Santani's. Uh, but again, when it comes to the angles, I wasn't perfect. Uh, and and, and I, I don't know what I did. Now here we are at Manolo's, which served as Artie Bucco's restaurant, and in the earlier scene you could see Artie with a gun uh, upset at Tony because he blew up Vesuvio's, and the reason why is that Uncle Junior was going to whack Pussy Malanga inside of Vesuvio's, which would have caused bad press for Artie Bucco, and ultimately take his family business of 50 years and run it into the ground. So Tony's solution was to actually blow up Vesuvio's himself, uh, as you can see right here. And as you can see, they actually built the facade uh, to which they use that with pyrotechnics to make that explosion. Here we are at the Bada Bing, the strip club to where all the guys hung out. And in this specific scene, Tony's talking to his consigliere Sill about who the rat may be. Uh, and everything's pretty much still the same. This is the side of the building to where Tony has walked out this door many times. Uh, the door is still the same. The side of the building, the roof, the pipes, everything's still the same. The only difference is there's no Bada Bing customer parking sign. And in this episode, University, Tony is trying to give advice to one of the strippers, Tracy, on whether or not she should have Ralph Cifaretto's baby. And here's Christopher making a phone call in front of the party box, which no longer exists, uh, but all the light posts and the signs in the background are pretty much exactly the same, uh, minus that there's no more party box, uh, which is a great place to go for party accessories. Now in this scene, to get revenge uh, for Mikey Palmisi committing some hits, Tony Soprano takes that staple gun and staples Michael Palmisi on the sidewalk. And as you can see, uh, that crack right behind my head is still the same all these years later. 
Uh, and then he drops his staple gun in the middle of the road before entering in to the sit-tight loungeonette to talk to Uncle Junior to work out uh, the issues at hand. Now after the discussion with Uncle Junior at the sit-tight loungeonette, Uncle Junior tells Tony the next time he comes in to come heavy or to not come at all. Uh, and, and you can see Tony Soprano re-entering the sit-tight loungeonette on another day, coming in heavy. This next location is called Globe Motors where Tony Soprano, uh, through his therapy, met this woman, Gloria Trillo, as you can see right here. Uh, and he goes to try and ask her out on her date. Uh, the Ford sign in the background is the same. The building in the background is still the same. Uh, here I was trying to replicate sitting on a car and the ladder, the garage door, everything is still the same. Um, and now Globe Motors is just an abandoned building, I guess, where they store extra trucks. Uh, and, but pretty cool spot. Here we are at Tony Soprano's mother's house, Livia Soprano. You can actually see that the 55, the address of the house, is still the same. Uh, they actually added a fence around the house for the show. Uh, and when you pull up uh, in here in 2020, it doesn't feel like you won't even notice the house. It's weird. Uh, but if you pay close attention to detail, like the side of the house, everything is still the same. Uh, and the head-on shot, as you can see right here, uh, there's a tree that was taken down, kind of right in the middle there. But pretty cool, nonetheless. Now what Tony Soprano ends up doing is putting his mother into a nursing home, excuse me, uh, a retirement community called Green Grove. Uh, and as you can see, the front awning is actually pretty the same. Uh, the lamp posts in the background are the same. Uh, and pretty much there's a doctor's parking and then to the right, there's visitor's parking. And here Tony is meeting with his cop friend, Vin McKazian, uh, who's on the inside working for the mob, feeding him information. Um, and in this shot, uh, that tree is the same, just a little bit bigger all these years later. Uh, and here I was, standing where Tony Soprano did, at the Green Grove parking lot. Now, Tony would often talk on the payphones as to not get caught by the government talking on cell phones. Uh, and this location is actually pretty the same. The light posts and the highway sign in the background are still there. Uh, but this is right in front of Mrs. Hannah's Krause's Chocolate Company or something like that. And I remember driving by this building as a kid. Uh, and I think it was pretty cool they used it in The Sopranos. As you can see right here. Yep, okay. In this shot, Tony meets Jack Massarone to talk about construction at the Riverside Square Mall in Hackensack, New Jersey. But since they actually filmed the show there, the mall has undergone construction itself. Uh, as you can see, it's completely different here in 2020. Here, Tony meets with Johnny Sack, the head of the New York crime family, at Johnny Sack's house, which gets raided by the FBI. Tony flees on foot and winds up at an elementary school sitting on these stairs to where... Here I am sitting on those. Sitting exactly where James Gandolfini once sat. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting myself. And yep, pretty cool. Okay. Now, Tony Soprano has been known to walk down his driveway in a bathrobe and his boxers to get the morning paper. Uh, here he's talking to Sal Vitro, the gardener. Uh, pretty much uh, the house, which is located in Caldwell, New Jersey, uh, pretty much still exactly the same as it was in the show. Uh, and they, they filmed the pilot episode back in 1999 here. Uh, as you can see, that pillar that holds the light, that little green sign with the number, uh, it's all pretty much spot on, still the same. Uh, and then there was this shot. Tony walks down the driveway. He didn't know who was in the car, uh, but it was Uncle Pussy Bomatiero. After he went missing for a little while, and then he came back to talk to Tony. Um, and it was all in all a fun day of going out and finding uh, Sopranos filming locations. Uh, if you could please stop by www.virtualcons.com use referral code LABEAST and sign up for the beta I'd appreciate it very much thank you